Welcome everyone to Hillcrest Connects, where we briefly want to share with you what it means to meet together as we catch a glimpse of what God is doing in and through our congregation. Today we have with us Tracy Canodal. She is a member of our congregation and a volunteer here as well. Tracy, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. Can you share with us how COVID-19 has affected you personally, in your work, in your family, anything you'd like to share? Sure. Um, I think at first when it all started, it didn't really affect us a whole lot. And I think myself, along with probably a lot of other people, didn't think it was going to be as bad as it is right now. Um, Luckily, I'm still able to work. My husband, Chris, is still able to work. Our day home is still open, so our daughter can still go to her day home. Um, so our everyday, day-to-day -day situation hasn't changed much. Um, but now that we're getting weeks into it, we're starting to feel the effects of not being able to come to church and not be able to get together in person with our small group or even see family or friends. And it's it's starting to wear on us. It just feels weird going to the store when only one of us is allowed in at a time. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been an adjustment. What do you feel that you've lost the most? Hmm. Connection. I mean you try like you can text and you can call and FaceTime and I'm so thankful for all of that technology, but um, I think just real connection because I still am able to go to work at the hospital and be around people all day, which I'm very thankful for, but you just talk about work all day and it's not like that personal connection. And so um, we haven't seen either of our parents who both live here um, in quite a while and I think that that's what we miss the most is our families. What have you gained? <laughs> um, an appreciation <laughs> for friends and family. And um, I've appreciated being able to be forced to slow down because both Chris and I are involved in a ton, usually during like the school year. Um, we volunteer a ton here at the church mostly. Um, Chris plays volleyball, there's all sorts of different things. And so it's forced us to kind of slow down and appreciate self time. Um, so I'd say that that's a huge thing. So tell us a little bit about that self time. Yeah, well now that we're into it for so long, I'm kind of sick of self time. <laughs> but um, just quieter evenings. And um, one thing that we've been able to really focus on is Shiloh's bedtime routine. Whereas I feel like before we were rushing to get home and get supper going and then, okay, we gotta give her a bath. Oh, she doesn't get a bath tonight because there's no time and we have to go to worship practice. We have to go to volleyball, whatever. Um, so we've been able to just really enjoy us time as a family. So that's been a huge blessing, but I'm kind of nervous for when things go back to normal to adjust to come out of that or how can we still make that a big priority, but still do all the other things we were doing before. So what's going on in your spiritual life? Can you explore that with us a little bit? Yeah, um, so at first, um, when all this was starting, I felt like we prayed a lot about, you know, this is God's in control, he's got it. Um, he'll protect us and, and whatever happens, He's got us and, you know, we pray a lot about that. And um, I think it's, I've had a lot of really amazing conversations with other people about it. Um, like with our brother Denver, and we've talked about how this isn't a surprise to God. And I think that that's really helped calm my anxieties and just relax and not feel like I have to spend my entire prayer time being like, God, please just like calm my heart and all these things. I can just like thank him for this opportunity to be with my family more or whatever. Um, we've been able to connect with our small group in a different way. Um, we have a group text and so we're constantly texting and a lot of us have gone through some crazy things in this last little while and we um, have met via Zoom. Um, which has been also a blessing. But it's been a, 
it's been challenging. Like, I feel like you don't connect with people as much and know, like, what their prayer needs are. Like, when we come to church on Sunday and we have that fellowship, like, you talk to people more about what's going on. And so they can share with you, oh, I'm struggling with this, or, oh, this amazing thing happened. And, and we can pray with them about that. But, like, being isolated, I don't know. I like praying for other people and not spending a lot of time praying for myself. So I, I miss being around people for that reason. Can we explore work a little bit? Sure. What, what's that like? What's, what's the atmosphere like for you? And, and do you get opportunities to encourage people and build people up? So when this was all first happening um, at the hospital, we didn't really, nothing really changed at the beginning. Um, and then recently, like within the last month, um, all of a sudden they started barricading all of the entrances. Um, so there's only two entrances in and two exits out. Um, so even our little ID badges can open all the locked doors and they don't work anymore. Um, and so actually the Friday that that was starting, I had gone home and I started getting a sore throat. And so then I was mandatory off for two weeks. And so then two weeks went by and they implemented all of these changes and I came back and I was excited to come back so I was tired of being by myself at home. Um, and I got to the hospital and I'm walking up under like the dome and it looks totally different and I'm like, oh, this is like, I'm starting to feel like anxious. Um, and they make you fill out a form saying that you don't have any of the symptoms and they take your temperature. Um, there's only like a, a small little window you can go. There's tape all over the floor. Like you can't be close to people. Um, and the energy is like exhausting. So you could not have a very busy day, but you still come home and feel drained because it's all people talk about. Um, so that first little while getting back, it wasn't so bad. And then they introduced the masks that we have to wear. And it's just like... Um, a lot, you know, um, not being able to like show my face to patients. Like I feel like they um, feel anxious about it. So I often I'm like, I'm smiling underneath the mask. It might not look like it, but I'm smiling. Um, but yeah, it's somewhat comforting to know where we all feel the same way going in there. And now that I've been back for a few weeks, it's like, well, this is just routine. Like it feels like yeah. the new normal. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the energy is definitely, I would say, negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, dra it drains you by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to get through that, and how do you encourage people that you know are experiencing the same thing? Yeah, I think talking about it is important to an extent, but when you dwell on it too much, yeah. it can kind of weigh you down a little bit. Um, so you can get little passes, um, so that you can come in and out. So once you've been checked for the day, you're good for that 24 hour period or whatever. Um, so going outside at least once a day is like really helpful. Um, we have a lunch room upstairs. So me and some coworkers will eat in there together and we can be far enough apart. So you're not eating alone and, and just making sure you're around other people and not focusing on the patients and your job and not focusing on all of these restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get any opportunity to, to talk with people about your faith, to encourage them with your faith? To Yeah, and I, actually, like, not dur necessarily during this time, but, you know, the people that I work with know that I come to Hillcrest. And, and so every once in a while, I'll get a little question, like, how do you feel about this? Or how do you feel about that? How do you deal with this? And um, that's been a blessing, but also when I meet a patient that I know has the same beliefs as me, and I can't necessarily get into it with them. Um, but I recently had a patient who um, is a believer and she had a stroke and isn't able to communicate. And now we have visitor restrictions, so no family can come in. And um, I work with therapeutic recreation, so we do all sorts of different recreational leisure programs for patients. And so this lady was assessed and, oh, she doing her daily devotions is important to her. 
and Christian music. I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> and so I've had the opportunity to go in and read her daily devotion to her because she's not able to read it herself. And so that's been special and um, encouraging for me when I know that nobody else can get through. And then I can go in and just do one small thing and connect with her on that level. It was pretty sweet. That's beautiful. Yeah. So everything you've experienced, what you've gone through, um, is there something that you can share with your church family to encourage? I think it's important to not give up hope that God is like working in this situation and to not forget that God uses every situation for good. And he didn't cause this to happen, but it's something that we're all walking through together and to take it as an opportunity to check in on people, um, have grace for people who maybe aren't checking in on you. Um, just get connected with people as best as you can. I mean, most of us have access to technology and, and, and whatnot, but to just believe that this is going to be over at some point and we're all going to be able to come back here together and I actually have thought about that so much in the last I'd say week of like what is that first Sunday going to be like like when we can all come back to Hillcrest and it's it, it like makes me emotional like thinking about being with that many people that I love and that we can celebrate that God is still good and we made it through and he can lead us through anything at this point like this is one of the harder things that we've been through in the last however many years so yeah that's great Tracy thank you and thanks for coming in and sharing with us thank you for having me and thank you for joining with us today to stay connected with us sign up on realm follow us on our social media sites or visit us at hillcrestchurch.net